Okay, so let's see if you can figure out what i to the 30th power is equal to without the aid of a calculator. And the i that we're talking about here is an imaginary number, so we are talking about complex numbers. And uh, typically, uh, complex numbers are introduced at the first year algebra level. But when you get into courses like Algebra 2, College Algebra, certainly pre-calculus, you really get into uh, complex numbers. And this is a question that you should be able to answer, again, without the aid of a calculator. But a lot of people are going to have a tough time here, and they're not going to be able to do this right because they're going to give up too soon. So don't give up. Let me give you a bit of a clue. Try to look for patterns. Okay, so I don't want to give you too many hints because I want to give you a full opportunity to figure this out. And if you have the answer, well, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem without the aid of a calculator. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so i to the 30th power uh, without the aid of a calculator. Now, real quick here, if you want to just double check yourself on a calculator, you can do that if you want to. So you're going to need a scientific calculator or certainly like a graphing calculator, you're going to have to look for the I uh, component, the imaginary uh, button. Of course, all calculators are different, but you should be able to do this easily within uh, or on one of those calculators. But let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is the following. I to the 30th power is equal to negative 1. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, that is very good. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you could tell your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of evaluating expressions and powers with uh, imaginary numbers. Now, this gets to be pretty exciting stuff and this is actually a very simple type of problem. But uh, these problems can get much more interesting. I'm talking about taking the power of complex numbers. So if you have something like 4 plus 6i, all this to the 10th power, well, what I'm going to show you here is not going to be really that applicable. Okay, This stuff, you're going to need some pretty heavy-duty mathematics to figure out. But this problem right here is not too bad. So let's go and see how we can do this pretty easily without the aid of a calculator. By the way, if you want to learn how to... Um, do these type of problems right here. Uh, this is stuff that you will learn in a full trigonometry or pre-calculus course. Uh, you can find a link to that uh, course in the description below and you want to look under like polar uh, equations. Um, uh, also De Morves theorem. Okay, some of you might recognize this or might be like, wow, I want to learn this. Well, this again is pretty complicated, but what we're going to do here is not that complicated, at least in my opinion. All right, so first things first, first we need to understand, hey, what is an imaginary number? Okay, now if you have not yet studied this, but you're just interested in learning about this, well, let's just take a quick, quick uh, review of what an imaginary number is. This is a very kind of informal um uh, you know, kind of a review. It's certainly not a lesson. But if I take the square root of 16, the answer is 4. Okay, so hopefully everybody knows that that's the principal square root, which is the positive version. Now, if you have some sort of equation like this, x squared is equal to 16, this is a quadratic equation. We would want to uh, solve this equation by taking the square root of, of both sides. Now, notice this is a quadratic equation. It's going to have two solutions. So x would be equal to positive and negative 4. So a positive 4 times a positive 4 is 16. And negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16 as well. So you only put the positive and negative version of a square root when you're talking about finding roots or zeros of solutions or uh, equations like quadratic equations or higher order polynomial equations. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So why do I bring all this up? Well, let's suppose we had this situation, x squared is equal to negative 16. 
Now, uh, you know, looking at this quadratic equation, we're like, well, this has two solutions, so let's just take the square root of both sides. Well, we have a problem here because when we take the square root of negative 16 in the uh, space of the real numbers, uh, the answer doesn't exist. Okay, now if you want to go ahead and check this on some sort of basic calculator, if you have some sort of uh, real simple calculator, you might very well put this in, the square root of negative 16, into your calculator, and you might see something like an error, or your calculator might start to smoke or shake. You know, you got to be careful, right? Your calculator is saying, hey, I don't understand what's going on. Well, the answer to this is in the imaginary or complex number system, okay? So let's just kind of finish through uh, this little thought here. So what we're going to do as square root of negative 16 is we're going to factor a negative 1. So we're going to think of this as 16 times negative 1. So 16 times negative 1 is the same thing as negative 16 or the square root of negative 16. And then, of course, we can separate this, this one big radical, one big square root, as a uh, square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1. And now we know that uh, the square root of 16 is 4 or positive negative 4 times the square root of negative 1. And by definition, I, the imaginary number I, or imaginary component um, I, is equal to the square root of negative 1. So the answer here would be 4I. Okay, so that's just a quick, quick review on imaginary numbers, and uh, I'm doing this for those of you out there that have not yet studied this stuff. And, you know, this is certainly, um, you know, not beyond what you can learn, and if you are going to continue running mathematics, you'll certainly be running into problems like this. Okay, so let's get back to figuring this out without a calculator. So the first thing we want to do is review what i is equal to. So i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So for all practical purposes, we're trying to take the square root of negative 1, all this to the 30th power. Now, we could just multiply this out uh, times itself 30, uh, 30 times, and that would be a big chore. But let's suppose I wanted to be mean about this problem, and I said, all right, well, if you think you could do that, how about 300, i to the 300th power? Now, a lot of you would be like, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm done watching your videos. I'm going to unsubscribe. Listen, well, we're not going to you know, do that, but what we are going to do is understand that we don't want to think of this in terms of just multiplying the square root of negative 1 by itself 30 times. Now, of course, that is a crude way of doing this problem, but there is a much, much better way, and it involves just patterns or powers of i. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, start looking at some powers of i right now. So i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Now, if we think of um, i squared, what we're going to do is square both sides, right? So i squared is going to be equal to the square of negative, uh, square root of negative 1. So if we square that, what do we get? Just negative 1. So that's what i squared is equal to. How about i to the third power? Well, i to the third power is uh, equal to i squared times i. Now remember, if you have uh, powers and exponents, something like uh, x squared times x to the first, uh, this is equal to x cubed because we're, when we're multiplying powers with the same base, we're going to add the exponents. So this is x cubed. So i cubed is equal to i squared times i to the first. So this is kind of a little trick here that we can use. So we know what i squared is equal to. It's negative 1, right? So I, this is uh, i squared here is the same thing as negative 1. So this is going to be negative 1 times i to the first, which is just i. So this is going to be negative times the square root of negative 1, which, of course, is uh, the square root of negative 1 by definition is i. So i to the third power is nothing more than negative i. Okay, so hopefully you can kind of see what's going on here. Like, oh, yeah, we can kind of just continue to do this. So, you know, you might be thinking to yourself, well, how are we going to use all this uh you know, knowledge to figure this out. Well, that part is coming. So let's take a look at i to the fourth. i to the fourth, we can think of that as i squared times i squared. Again, same base. We just simply have to add the exponents here. So that would be i to the fourth. So i squared is what? That's negative 1, and i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is uh, 1. So i to the fourth is 1. Okay, so uh, again, we need to look at some uh, basic powers of i, and you need to have some basic understanding of powers and exponents, and now we could put this all together, and here is the key. Okay, so we're going to think of i to the 30th as i squared to the 15th power. So this is one way we can do this. There's 
a couple different ways we can do it, but this is the easiest. Now, why would I write this? Well, first of all, let me just make sure you understand basic power, um, powers and exponents. When we have something like x squared to the third power, when we take a power to another power, what we're going to do is distribute that outside power to that inside power. So this is equal to x to the six. We're talking about the outside exponent times the inside exponents. Just think about it. x squared to the third power means x squared, which is x times x, times x times x times x times x. Altogether, we have six x's. Okay, so hopefully you understand this basic algebra concept. So i to the 30th power is the same thing as i squared to the 15th power, because that 15 times 2 is 30. Okay, so now that you understand that, we can substitute this i squared for what? Well, we already know that i squared is equal to negative 1. Okay, you see this is a little trickier. So now what we're going to be doing is figure out what negative 1 to the 15th power is. And really this problem comes down to what is negative 1 to an odd power? Okay, it's going to be the same thing and uh, negative 1 to an even power is going to be the same answer as negative 1 to an odd power. And we can, uh, we can figure this out right here. So let's take a look at negative 1 squared. Okay, this is, of course, you can do multiple different little tests here of even powers, but negative 1 squared is what? Negative 1 times negative 1. It's an even number. So negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. So negative 1 to an even power is going to be positive 1. Negative 1 to an odd power like 3 is going to be negative 1, right? Because negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1 times another negative 1 is negative 1. So here we have negative 1 to an odd power. So our answer is negative 1. Okay, so these type of problems definitely come up in courses, again, like Algebra 2, College Algebra, uh, things like that. But this problem right here is much more complicated, much, much more complicated. Matter of fact, to do this problem, you got to be really, really strong in math. And some of you might be like, well, hey, uh, I want to kind of see this problem. Well, if you want to see how to do a problem like this, and now this is a full on complex number. See, a complex number has two parts, a plus bi. There's an imaginary component and a real component. So this is a big complex number. What we have here with i is only a, uh, it's a complex number with zero as uh, the real part. But uh, to figure this problem out, this is quite a bit of work. But if you're going to progress into more advanced math, you're going to need to know how to do this. So if you need help with complex numbers, or um, uh, ma basic imaginary numbers. This right here would be stuff that you will learn, let's say like in the algebra two, again, college algebra level. But if you're at this more advanced level, well, check out my pre-calculus course. I'll pretty much teach you everything that you need to know. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.